Welcome to Myrtle Beach, a captivating paradise nestled along the stunning coast of South Carolina. Myrtle Beach has been my home for almost 40 years. Now I'm leaving. Why on earth would someone move away from a place like this? Stay tuned until the end to hear my answer and to learn more about my future plans. There is no doubt that Myrtle Beach is an irresistible tourist destination. It was popular when I first came here, but the number of people who visit each year has exploded over time. The last that I heard was that more than 20 million people vacation here each year. With its miles of pristine sandy beaches, Myrtle Beach offers a coastal retreat that is virtually unmatched. Whether you're looking to relax under the warm sun, take a dip in the waters of the Atlantic, or enjoy a leisurely walk along the shore, this beachside haven has something for everyone. Make no mistake, this is why all those people come here. Unless you have to drive here and park your car, a day at the beach can be free entertainment. It's basking in the sun, walking along to look for shark's teeth, and playing in the waves, which are often just big enough to provide a thrill. My favorite time has always been the moments as the sun touches the North American continent for the first time in the morning. There's just something about that big fiery ball seeming to rise out of the ocean that provides a charge which affects your mood for the rest of the day. It's pretty great simply to watch it happen over the top of waves as they continue their never-ending march onto the beach. My preference, though, has always been to have one of the area's piers in the foreground. Light and shadow interacting together creates a dynamic scene that thrills in the moment and can make photography and video so much more interesting than just sky and sea. It doesn't hurt that the Spring Made Pier has been about a five minute drive from my house for the past decade. Another benefit of seeing the ocean at this time is that the majority of those who have crowded into local accommodations are still asleep when all of this happens. Seeing the sunrise over the Atlantic might be a bucket list item for some, but most are content to wait until late in the morning to step out onto the sand. Someone asked me one time why in general I prefer shooting video or taking photographs at sunrise instead of sunset. It's the fact that everyone is up and about as the sun is going down. Only a few are dedicated enough to wake early and greet the day when their instincts tell them it's much better to be in bed. Myrtle Beach is more than just a place to soak up the sun. The city boasts a vibrant nightlife and a plethora of entertainment options that cater to all ages. I've always enjoyed a stroll through the main part of town along Ocean Boulevard. The shops and restaurants just steps away offer uncountable opportunities. That has been made even better with the addition of the Oceanfront Boardwalk. It stretches for around a mile in the heart of the main tourist area. For the most part, it's a wide concrete sidewalk, but there is a section that consists of composite boards. It's this part where the surface was made of actual wooden planks years ago. The boardwalk is usually ranked as one of the best in the country in lists that talk about such things. Myrtle Beach is often referred to as the golf capital of the world. With around 90 championship golf courses designed by renowned architects, it's a golfer's paradise. It's still possible to immerse yourself in the lush green fairways, scenic landscapes, and challenging holes that have attracted golfers from around the globe for decades. As golf has diminished in popularity in recent years, the number of courses has actually fallen. There was a time that I played about once a week. My skills weren't improving, so I decided I either needed to play more or less. I chose less. It's a decision that I've never regretted. People come here for the beach, but so much has been established to keep them entertained when they are not on the sand or in the waves. Broadway at the beach, for example, is a marvel. Shops and restaurants and attractions provide enough to keep a family occupied for days. As a local, this is one of those places to be avoided, but there's no ignoring its appeal. I can remember when this was a pine forest. It just shows how much things have changed since I made this place my home. Something interesting that I just learned about Myrtle Beach is that it has more restaurants per capita than New York, Paris, or Rome. There are nearly 500 restaurants for every 100,000 people who live here. That being said, I almost never go out to eat. I generally just eat one meal per day and I enjoy cooking. There is one exception to the rule and that is Sunday at lunch. I treat myself by eating at Back Home in Merle's Inlet. It's a buffet with all sorts of stuff from barbecue to shrimp. Some days they have pineapple cobbler, which is amazing. The fried oysters here are the best I've had anywhere, lightly breaded and never overcooked. They are available on the buffet several nights each week. My home for the past 14 years has been in the Market Common community. It is fantastic. There's a town center with shops and restaurants, 
plus plenty of green space where events are held throughout the year. This is walking distance from my house. In fact, I walk by here every morning as part of my exercise routine. One of my favorite spots is Tidal Creek Brew House. There's coffee in the morning and beer throughout the day. Before they even opened, I signed up to be a founding member. I paid $1,000 and in return, I got a $500 credit each year for three years. I know a good deal when I see one. I've had no trouble taking full advantage of those credits. Mini Sea Myrtle Beach is just a crowded commercialized tourist destination. Obviously, that's not the case. There are two state parks along the coast, which are both phenomenal. Myrtle Beach State Park is just a couple of miles from my house, but Huntington Beach State Park is my favorite. Atalaya is called the Castle on the Sand. It was the winter home for an artist built in the early 1930s. The brick structure positioned just over the dunes from the ocean in a visually stunning environment has always been one of my favorite locations in this area. Huntington Beach also provides habitat for a large population of alligators. As part of my job, I visited with a student who was pursuing a career in photography. We went to a place where every evening, many of the gators cross a path to get from one pond to another. Unbelievable. There's also the Waccamaw River. In recent years, I've enjoyed kayaking on the Blackwater River for both work and pleasure. It never disappoints. The water flows slowly here, making it easy to travel in either direction. It does move a bit as a result of the tide. The main landing that I've used is less than a 10 minute drive from my house. It's incredible that the peacefulness that can be experienced in this location exists literally minutes away from heavy traffic and crowds. I'll probably miss this more than anything. There are a couple of other towns nearby that I would like to call out. Conway is a great small southern town located around 12 miles inland from Myrtle Beach. It has numerous shops and restaurants and a couple of really neat parks. I just mentioned that I loved kayaking on the Waccamaw River. The river runs directly through Conway, just a short walk from the main commercial district. This is a great amenity. The river walk allows access to the Waccamaw and provides a spectacular location for a stroll, no matter the time of day. Another spot with a fantastic walk along the water is Merle's Inlet. There you can jump on the marsh walk. This place carries the reputation of being the seafood capital of South Carolina. On the Marsh Walk, you have a string of restaurants and bars on one side, and the inlet and tons of boats on the other. I just produced another video about Georgetown. You'll be able to find that right here on my channel. I'm leaving out plenty of cool spots. It's safe to say I've enjoyed time in lots of other communities, from Little River to Garden City, North Myrtle Beach to Pauley's Island, and Surfside Beach to spots just across the state line in North Carolina. So the question again, maybe even more emphatically after all I've mentioned in the last few minutes becomes, why in the world would I move away from this? I just recently retired and now I'm heading out to search for adventure. In the fall of this year, I will embark on solo full-time world travel. For the most part, I will spend four or five weeks in each place that I visit. My first trip is fully planned. From mid-September until late January, I will travel to Galway and Dublin and Ireland, Sofia, Bulgaria, Vlora, Albania, Athens, Greece, and Tunis, Tunisia in Northern Africa. I'll return to the States for a few weeks in February, then the plan is to hit someplace in Mexico and move on to a few months in Central and South America. Any ideas about specific destinations are welcome in the comments. I'm thrilled about what's ahead. I thoroughly enjoy being part of this community, but it's time for something new. Please follow along here on this channel. I've rebranded it old, alone, and far from home. My goal is to show that those words in that order are not sad, but full of excitement and possibility. Thanks for watching, and no matter what you want to do, be brave.